Our Rugby World Cup defending champions are in action later. South Africa are looking to book their spot against the All Blacks, who saw off Argentina last night. The box take on 2003 champions England in the semi-final in Paris tonight. The Roses are still smarting from their 2019 World Cup final defeat in Japan. While South Africa are looking for a spot in the title decider as they bid for a record fourth title. For more on this, we're joined in studio by broadcaster and author David O'Sullivan and sports psychologist Ian Shippey, as well as ENC sports editor Vatango Beni. And on Zoom, it's Vikas Van Heerden, who's a 2007 World Cup winning Springbok flag. A very good morning to you, gentlemen. Thank you so much for taking your time out on this super Saturday of, of sports. I'm going to start with you, David. What do you think is going through the players' minds right now? And um, a lot of people are saying that France is probably as tough as it can get. Do you agree with that? Yeah, well... Um... In playing in yeah, France, the previous they, France match, yeah, yeah, they, that that was incredibly uh, tough, and the fact that they've chosen an unchanged team shows that um, the, the team doctor's satisfied that everybody's up for it, and these guys are just hugely conditioned. The fitness uh, and conditioning coach has done the most amazing job, but it's all about alignment. Are they properly aligned? And that's something Rossi and Jacques work on mm. extensively. These guys are all aligned. They understand each other implicitly. They don't, almost don't have to communicate verbally with mm. one another. It'll be just a look, and they will know what to do. Uh, I think they'll be up for it. They've all emphasized the danger of complacency. Yeah. So that will be very much on their minds, to raise the game and make sure they cons consistently play at that caliber. But this is the most experienced Springbok team we've ever put out. They'll be up for the, cha uh, the challenge. They'll be up for the challenge, Ian. But let's talk about just the mental aspect of it. They just come from a very tough game against France. In fact, I think we all need therapy after that encounter. Yeah. But just mentally for the players, having to bounce back and focus on yet another big game, what does it require of just mental strength? I... I believe, firstly, they've got the environment in which to do it. Um, uh, I was listening to Pollard's interview this morning, and he was saying that that French game is maybe the most intense test match he's ever played. So they would have stood back. They would have had the physical conditioning. But they would uh, look into themselves to, to see how they're rebooting. But the incredible thing about um, this team is you're not just exercising your own mental fortitude and strength. Yeah. There's a collective. It's a family. There's brothers. It's almost, David, it's almost fatherhood from some of these coaches coming in. So yeah. it's an extraordinary environment in which to do that. And I, I echo what David's saying. I think forefront of their minds is going to be no complacently. They're going to be totally switched on. Because you, you know, you're a World Cup winner in 2007. And I want to just get from your perspective, um, as Ian says, you know, that family aspect is quite important, having a strong team behind you. You played in 2007. You won the World Cup. Well, how important was that family structure for you in order to get to that Red Ellis Trophy? Hi, good morning. Yeah, no, it's, for me, it's very interesting that you, uh, Ian, uh, on your show, because uh, this uh, knockout phase is all about mental, and uh, the physical work has been done. You, you prepared your life for this for moments and games like this. So um, yeah, this 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 week is it's mentally, and uh, especially after last week's um, nail biter, uh, it's going to be a big one. But just to take it uh, from you, um, they haven't had much time to recover from that France match. How do you think this affects them also just physically? It's been less than a week uh, since the France match, and now we're going into the England match later this evening. Yeah, I think, you know, David touched on it. You know, people li like talking about you know, Rassi and, and mm. what Rassi's done. There's a whole team behind, mm. you know, uh, managing the, the, the spin box, and, and I think they've done a fantastic job. Yeah. You know, when it comes to their strength and conditioning, um, yes, we speak about the mental aspect of it as well. I think... This is probably one of the fittest Springbok teams you, you're going to find. And, 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 they, and they're used to this kind of physicality. I mean, they thrive on, on this physicality. You know, you go back to 2019 and how Rusty would say, forget what I've said during the week. Mm. Just go out there and really, uh, you know, beat them up. You know, I remember play, when they played against Japan and he said, mm. they want to take us down, so let's take them to Qatar because that's where we live. That's where we thrive. <laughs> so the Springboks actually thrive on physicality. Yeah. So I, I think they would have had a, a, a good week of recovery. Um, and a lot of work would have gone into um, I, I mean, when you come down to knockout rugby, you expect the physicality from all those teams. But the Springboks, they thrive on this kind of stuff. And, and I'm sure they're really going to be up for it. I, I think at the back of their minds, they, they, they're thinking of what they need to do, um, replicate what they did in yeah. 2019, but do it 
<laughs> 10 times more. Yeah. Vata, I'm going to stick with you for a little bit. As a seasoned sports journalist, we've seen how sports does, you know, often unite a nation. Sometimes it becomes a little bit of a cliche saying that. But just the importance of the power and the brand that the Springboks are in terms of just building that nation. I mean, you see it everywhere. You go to the shops and everybody's wearing their Bok jerseys, everybody's singing Bok songs. Just how important is the nation building aspect of it? No, it's extremely important. Mm. And you go to 1995, this is where the, the love affair of the Web Ellis Trophy and the Springboks started. Mm. You know, with Nelson Mandela, I mean, yeah. David was, yeah. um, we spoke um, extensively about his experience at the 95 World Cup, you know, and then you go on to 2007, and Vickers will tell you, again, you know, um, you know, John Smith and, you know, having Tabon Beggy there, you know, really inspired that team, and, and they had spoken to Nelson Mandela, mm. you know, prior to spend a bit of time with, with Nelson Mandela as well, you know, and then that monumental moment in 20, 2019, the number six jersey, Sia Kolisi, yeah. being the first black swimmer captain, becomes the first black man to lift the Web Ellis Trophy. You know, and now they're chasing it back to back. You know, they, they, these are history chasers mm. at the Springboks when it comes to, to a World Cup. But more, more importantly, you know, in David's book uh, with Rasi, you know, they speak about, about, about race. They mm. speak about what the Springbok team actually means to South Africa and bring about hope. So you know, this team is, 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 is incredibly important to, to South Africa. We see what's going on in the yeah. country. And, you know, um, this is our only... Glimmer of hope at the moment. Um, <laughs> you know, they, they, they load shed our minds from, from our problems. So. You're absolutely right. My sister was actually saying yesterday, this is the only good thing about South Africa. I swear that's exactly what she said yesterday. Let's talk about the England match, David. What can we expect from the English? I mean, they're going to want some revenge. So they will have had somebody, I think Felix Jones will have been the designated person as the, one of the assistant coaches to focus particularly on England. They would have been anticipating ahead of this of semi-final what would happen uh, should uh, England triumph, then they will have all their plans worked out on how to counter England. The difference with 2019 is that we had played, the box had played England four times the previous year. So they knew that England side. This time around, they've only played them once recently, and that was in November last year. So uh, Felix Jones will have been analysing the lights out of this England side. And with this, as uh, Vata said, this collective of coaches, they'll have worked out their strategies. And this entire week, they would have been implementing yeah. them. And they've got two ways of doing it, either on the field or by using a game, a video game that Rossi has de devised called mm -hmm. Outfox. It'll go on the market uh, after the World Cup. And they sit in a boardroom and they play the game and work out their moves. A lot of work has gone on. Wow, Vickers, um, you've been in this situation before and you've watched South Africa over the past couple of matches. What do they realistically need to do to beat England? Well, uh, the big thing is, and I think uh, that's again, that's loose forward, uh, the importance of the breakdown. And uh, that's going to be an interesting one today. Um, England, especially in the game against uh, Fiji, uh, they slowed down the ball a lot at the breakdown and uh, they were allowed to do it. So it's going to be interesting how Ben Akiva is going to ref the, the breakdown um, because I think it's all going to be about tempo, uh, especially with our starting lineup. If you look at our guys that Russ is starting, uh, I think we want to go out there with a big bang and um, yeah, uh, bring, bring on intensity and speed. As a psychologist, Ian, what do you say to the Bok team 20 minutes before they get on the field? Just, just <laughs> keep doing it. Mm. Just keep doing it. Um, I, you would be tapping back into your history and your memory, but just keep, uh, just keep doing it. Uh, and there's an enjoyment factor and a flair yeah. factor as well. I think what was extraordinary after the French brought such intensity to the first few minutes was a counterattack. Mm. So I, I think it's, it's being resilient. It's recoiling back. And, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm confident in the guys today. Yeah, they've been here before. They, they, they've yeah. got this. They've got this. Let's talk a bit about Siakoli Sivata. I mean, he's just, like, he's, he's huge in, the, in, in South Africa. Everybody knows Siam Tanda Kolisi, and he's been very vital and pivotal in, in, in the Springbok camp. Just how important is his role and how he's carrying this responsibility? You know, I think <clears throat> when Sia came in, I, I remember I once wrote a piece about him. Mm saying that he needs to get in the room with Gary Tashman and, and John Smith. B because those are men that are remembered for the teams that they led. Mm. You know, um, and, and Sia has got to you know, uh, put his stamp of approval on, this, on the Springbok team. And oh boy, what, what a way in which he's done it. I think his humility has, has incredibly helped him 
um, in order to gain the confidence of the guys, um, he taps into a Dwayne, into a Andre Pollard, you know, into a Lukanyo Arm. So he's brought in other leaders, you know, in, into within his within his yeah. leadership group, and he's been vulnerable around those guys. So I, I think the guys have really embraced him, and I think more than anything, you know, coming from the background he comes from, he understands mm. what it means to be where he is, you know. So he doesn't take it for granted, you know. And, and again, I think Vickers will tell you, you know, the players get reminded over and over again. This could be a lot, the last time you, you wear a Buck jersey. So a guy like Sia, I think, really embraces it. And he, he tells the whole team again, mm -hmm. over and over again. And, and, and again, it's not about Sia Kulisi. You know? um, yes, you know, all, all the accolades come to him, but it's not about Sia Kulisi. It's, it's actually about the Spurmok team. You, know, you look at the different backgrounds of those players within that team, mm -hmm. where they come from, their struggles. You know, again, it epitomizes what South Africa is about. You know, and, and, and they've built the character of the team around that. Mm. And, um, and obviously, Sia becomes the face of the team. However, it's not just about Sia. It's, yeah. it's, it's actually about the whole collective. And, and I love the way a, a guy like, you know, Rassi, and especially Jacques, you know, having come into this role um, after 2019, has, has really, you know, um, put his arm around Sia and, and made sure that he continues to actually father him. Yeah. But more than anything, he's maintained the brotherhood between the leaders with, within the side. So... As much as we say, see, I see, I'm Tanda. Um, see, Tanda Yonge, then we love yes. the entire team. Yes, and that's exactly what Vickers was saying, just talking about the team spirit around it. You no, know, just not focusing on the one person being the team. It's absolutely not how it should be. Uh, we spoke about this, touched on it a little bit, um, David, the unchanged squad. What do you think of that? Yeah, it's, um, it, it just shows that they've got continuity. There are so many other players who could have come into the fold. But uh, Rassi's um, rationale and Jacques' rationale is you, you, if you're in the side, you've got to be played out. You've got to be injured or you've got to have s suffered a slump in form. Neither of those things have happened for these players, so they go again. But they understand, as Ian was saying, they've been so highly conditioned, they know to go again. Yeah. And they will also be looking at that England squad. They, I don't believe they feel that England physically is up to it fitness-wise is up to it, and they will have that big pack of England's running all over the park to tie them out. It's what they did in 2019. I wouldn't be surprised because there are some names that we see recurring if they do it again. Yeah, we're going to see how that goes uh, at 9 p.m. 9 uh, later this evening. Vickers, um, staying with the unchanged squad, there's been a huge debate. Uh, one of the big topics of conversation have been Andre Pollard or Manny Liebock. It's almost getting tired, actually, speaking about this. But just your thoughts on how Jacques Nienaber has used Manny Liebock and Andre Pollard throughout this tournament. What are your thoughts on the two, as well as the kicking? Well, both of them are brilliant uh, flowers uh, in their own right. And uh, they play two very different types of styles of uh, uh, games. Um, yeah, it's uh, people are always going to differ uh, who to start and uh, who to bring off the bench. But uh, it really came off for us uh, against France uh, we, when, when we started, we forget, like I said, the speed and uh, the tempo. So, um, yeah, no, it's uh, Marnie. Marnie is just, he really, he just grew, grew in, in stature this year. And uh, the, the rugby he's been playing at this level is just amazing. And uh, it's just making our whole back line uh, that, that more dangerous. But uh, Pollard, to have someone like a Pollard on the bench with, with his massive experience, that also gives uh, Marnie confidence on the field. Talk a little bit more about that pressure that is absolutely on the Springboks right now. But they've got a lot of backing from the fans. How much does that help their psyche going into matches like this? I think it, it's, it is immense. And, and, and they are so aware of, of, of us shouting and ratting for them. So I think that is a, a huge deposit in the emotional mm -hmm. tank. So I, I really... They, they're one with us and they're representing us. And it's, it's, it's a huge part of, of the poiki. Yeah. yeah. But uh, we are possibly, if South Africa win, we'll go up against New Zealand. A lot of people wrote New Zealand off, actually, at the beginning. I remember I even spoke to Akwana Dungani and he was like, nah, New Zealand this time around, not so much. But they've slowly, as the competition has progressed, started to improve. What have you thought from watching them and what we can expect if we do make that final? Nandia, there's one thing about the Southern Hemisphere teams. They, mm. they, they're built for the World Cup. You know, they're built for such tournaments. So anyone who wrote New Zealand off, a lot of people also wrote the Springboks off. Yes. You know, um, it, it's phenomenal how these teams just become better, you know, by the, by the game. And I think New Zealand hurt a lot from the, the, the tests they played against the Springboks at Twickenham. 
Um, it was a big wake-up call for them. Um, and, and they knew what, what they were going to have to bring at, at the World Cup. And everyone is aware of the quarterfinal situation. You know? And again, a team like New Zealand is so experienced. You know, again, you know, they, they tap into the previous test yeah. matches and the experience that's within the pack. You get a guy like Sam Whitelock, the most exp <laughs> uh, kept um, um, international, you know, um, and uh, <laughs> it, just Aaron Smith. You go through that entire team and, and you re realize, you know, they're World Cup winners as well in, the, in that side. So, again, they tapped into history. And when, when they spoke in the build-up to last night's game, mm. all they spoke about was 2019 and how England, you know, it really shocked them. And it shocked the system, I think, their psyche as well. And it, it, you know, it, it, it said to them, don't take it for granted. I, I remember Aaron Smith saying that the pain that they felt mm. in 2019, you know, you, you just can't forget it as well. So the Springboks, same thing as well. You write them off, they come into the tournament. Argentina, you write them off. They may not be playing well, but yeah. they come into a World Cup. And these teams just know exactly what to do. And I think uh, kudos to the rugby championship because it, it really prepares them mentally and physically for tournament rugby. Vickers, as a uh, World Cup winner, I just want to last year from your side, how, when you're playing in a rugby World Cup, how difficult is it to not look ahead to possibly the next matches that can come up, for example, New Zealand, if we make the final, and to focus on matches one match at a time? Is it a bit tricky to detach yourself from other matches that are still to come? No, well, that's that's a privilege you don't have. You you can only focus at a game in it. And um, again, like Vata said uh, a little bit earlier, again, it's uh, Springbok rugby and especially World Cup tournaments. Uh, playing in a Springbok side is so much more than the Springbok player or the person on the field. It's it's the whole nation's hopes that UK and um, yeah, it's, it's a huge responsibility and um, it's it, it's, a, it's a huge honour as well. Yeah. So um, I believe um, the guys, they can't think farther than uh, than the English game. Uh, we always knew the New Zealand side is, is going to be a side to be reckoned with. But uh, at this stage, I think um, the, the guys, the guys heads out there, they, they're only focusing on uh, 9 o'clock tonight, uh, England. All right, so we've run out of time completely, but I'm going to put you on the spot. Just want a quick prediction of how this match is going to end. Vickers, very quickly, what's your prediction? Uh, 20 points for South Africa. Wow, listen to that, David. I'm going 10 points for okay. South Africa. Okay, Ian? South Africa, 12 points. Vata? South Africa, 10 points. Remember, start of France, 99. Yeah. 2007, twice. We'll do it again. Let's meet again tomorrow and have a recap <laughs> of that match. Thank you so much for joining me, uh, gentlemen. I really appreciate it. That was broadcast and author David O'Sullivan, sports psychologist Ian Shippey, uh, sports editor at ENCA, Vatangobeni, and Vickers van Heerden, who is a 2007 World Cup winning Springbok flank. All right.